So today we're going to go through all of module 7. You'll find this is a really easy, simple module with only two equations in the whole module. So Maxwell's equations are the basis, basic equations of electromagnetism and tells us about electromagnetic waves, which are basically light waves. So we've sort of done these ones as we went through the other chapters. We just didn't identify them as such. So Gauss's law relates the electric field to the electric charge. So you remember we did calculations like that in the first module. The second module, the second Maxwell's law tells us that there's no magnetic charges. What that means is you can't have a north pole without having a south pole. So magnetic field lines always go out of a north and into a south. You can't have a field line just coming from one spot. The third law says that if you change the magnetic field, you create an electric field, and that's like magnetic induction. And the fourth one is that if you have an electric current, it creates a magnetic field. If you have a change in electric field, it'll also create a magnetic field. So what those tell us is that since a change in electric field produces a magnetic field and a change in magnetic field produces an electric field, if you have a current that varies sinusoidally, it's going to create a field that's electric and magnetic propagating through space on its own. So the, the pictures down below show an antenna at two different points in time. So in the antenna you'll see that it's hooked up to an alternating current supply. So that means that the current in that wire goes up and down and up and down and up and down with whatever frequency the function generator is. So when the current is going up you can see I've got a positive charge and a negative charge so that the electric field which is the red lines are going to come out of the positive and into the negative so they're going to curve around like the red lines. The magnetic field if you put your thumb in the direction of the current I you can see that the magnetic field lines your fingers curl into the page so the magnetic field is those blue X's there. So at this point in time the electric field is going from the top to the bottom of the page and the magnetic field is going into the page. If we look at figure B, so now we're a short time later, the poles have reversed on the power supply, so the current is now going down. So now electric field goes from the plus to the minus side, so that goes towards the top. And the magnetic field, now you put your thumb of your right hand pointing downwards and your fingers curl out on the right side. So now the magnetic field is going out. So you can see on the very far right we've got the magnetic fields and electric fields that we created just that fraction in time earlier in figure A. And then now we have them reversed. And then if we wait a little while later it'll flip back again and we'll have the situation A again. So what happens that in space we're going to have magnetic fields that alternate from going in and out and electric fields that alternate from up and down. So as we go further and further away from the source you can see that the curves in the electric field flatten out and so when we're far enough away like in figure B you can see that the electric field lines are just straight up and down the magnetic field lines are straight in and out and we call those plane waves because they're shaped like a plane like a sheet of paper you'll notice that always the electric field and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other so the electric field is going up and down the magnetic field is going into and out of the screen and they're also perpendicular to the direction that the wave is traveling which is across the screen so the rule is that the electric field the magnetic field and the direction that the wave moves are all perpendicular to each other and this here is a sketch a three-dimensional sketch of the electric field in red, the magnetic field in blue. So the electric field is going up and down, and you'll see it goes like a sine wave. The magnetic field goes into and out of the screen. So this is meant to be a representation of it going out in the front and in at the back. And it also varies sinusoidally. You'll see that the electric field and the magnetic field have their maxima, their peak at the same point in time. And the direction that the wave moves is across the screen. So we can figure out the direction that the wave is going to move using the flat right hand rule that we used in the earlier module. So if you point 
take your right hand, put it flat, put your fingers along the direction of the electric field. So if we do it at the first point there, so we point your fingers up towards the ceiling, put your palm in the direction of the magnetic field. So that's going to be out. So rotate your hand around so that your palm is facing out. What direction is your thumb pointing? Well, your thumb should be pointing towards the right. If we do it at now the second point, now point your fingers or your flat hand in the direction of the electric field. So down towards the floor, rotate your palm so it's facing the direction of B, which is into the screen. What direction is your thumb pointing? It's also pointing in that direction. So make sure you're able to sketch a picture of the electric field, magnetic field for an electromagnetic wave, and also that you're able to do the right hand rule to figure out what direction one of the vectors is if you know the direction of the other two using that right hand rule. Here's just an animation showing it. So in this one, it looks like they've flipped the colors for the electric field and the magnetic field. I grabbed this off Wikipedia. Okay, so the electric field is going up and down with time. The magnetic field is going in and out with time as the wave moves across the screen in the plus X direction. Okay, so let's do an example. So if we know the magnetic field is to the west and the electric field is to the south, what direction is the wave traveling? Let's draw our compass point so we know never eat shredded wheat or never eat slimy worms, whichever you like. Okay, so the magnetic field is to the west and the electric field is to the south. What direction is the wave traveling? Remember, the wave has to travel perpendicular to E and to B. So the only choices are it's either going to be in or out, right? Those are the only two directions that are perpendicular to both E and B. So which is it? Take your right hand, put it flat, point your fingers down towards the floor, rotate your hand so that your palm is facing towards the west. What direction is your thumb pointing? Your thumb should be pointing into the screen. Okay, if you do a problem like this on the test, you'll do it with respect to the paper. Okay, so you'll have directions that are like to the top of the paper, bottom of the paper, left, right, and into the paper and out of the paper. All right, so what direction, we know what direction the wave travels, what is the speed of the light? Well, we know from physics one for waves, the speed of the wave is the wavelength times the frequency, and the speed of light is a very special number. It just depends on the permittivity and the permeability, those epsilon zero and mu zero constants that we had before. And it's three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And when we get to the module on relativity, you'll see that the number C is very important. If you've got some material other than vacuum, then the value for mu in that material, the permeability is always bigger than mu zero. And the value for epsilon zero, remember we talked about this for capacitors, epsilon is equal to some number bigger than one times epsilon zero. So that means the new speed is equal to one over the square root of mu times epsilon instead of one over mu zero epsilon zero. And since mu and epsilon are bigger than mu zero and epsilon zero, that speed in a material other than vacuum is always less than the speed of light. And you'll find out in the next module that that's what causes light to bend when it goes through materials other than vacuum. All right, so what are the properties of electromagnetic waves? The speed C, three times 10 to the eight, is just wavelength times frequency. So frequency and wavelength are related to each other. And also the electric field is much larger than the magnetic field. So even though in those pictures we drew it so that it looked like they were the same size as each other, it turns out the electric field is equal to the speed of light times B. And remember the speed of light is a third of a billion. So the magnetic field is a lot smaller than the electric field. Here's another concept that you're gonna to need to know for the test. The electromagnetic spectrum tells you about what wavelengths, excuse me for a minute.
Okay, sorry about that. So the electromagnetic spectrum is all the wavelengths and frequencies of light, and they can have any wavelength from zero up to infinity, any frequency from zero to infinity. But remember the wavelength and the frequency are related by C equals lambda F. Oops. So the wavelength is C over F, or the frequency is C over lambda. Remember when you do this, a lot of students mess up with their algebra, they do it too quick. The C is always going to be on the top in that equation. So if you look at the top and the bottom, you can see the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency is given by that equation. So we have names for different parts of the spectrum, and what you should remember is that as you go up in frequency, that's the increasing energy. Okay, so increasing energy is increasing frequency. And so you can see that if you look at low energy, we have things like radio waves. Then we go up to microwaves, so that's like your cell phone or TV stations. Then we go to infrared, which means below red. And then in between in this white region, you can see it's been zoomed out. In that white region, that's the visible light spectrum. So the spectrum that we can see with our, part of the spectrum we can see with our eyes is actually a very small part. And the lowest frequency we can see is in the red, about four times 10 to the 14 hertz. The highest is in the purple, violet, which is about 7.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Okay, so visible light, then we go up to ultraviolet. And if you remember, infra means below and ultra means above. Okay, so you can see the infrared is below the red and the ultraviolet is above the violet. Above ultraviolet, we have x-rays and then we have gamma rays in terms of increasing frequency. So if you think about it, on the top end of the spectrum, you know that x-rays is what they shoot through your body to check for a broken bone. So x-rays have a very high energy. They can go right through your bones. Gamma rays are very high energy radiation that's used if you get radiation treatment for cancer, for example. Okay, so increasing frequency is increasing energy. And so that's how I usually remember ultraviolet and x-rays have higher energy. Ultraviolet can give you skin cancer because of the damage to your skin. And so you can also memorize a mnemonic for increasing frequency. Raging Martians invaded Venus using X-ray guns. So that's radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma rays. So if you want to memorize that mnemonic or just memorize the order in which they come, you will be asked on a test very likely which has a higher frequency, for example, microwaves or x-rays, or which has a longer wavelength, microwave or x-rays. So you need to remember the basic order of the spectrum. Okay, so what are the calculations like? Well, they're extremely simple, and there's only two equations that we had. We had C equals lambda F, and E equals C times B. So we're gonna use those two equations in these sample calculations. So AM radio stations go from about 530 kilohertz to 1710 kilohertz. And so it asks, what's the wavelength range for that? Okay, so wavelength is C over F. So we're just going to do it for each of these two frequencies, figure out what the wavelength is. So C is 3 times 10 to the 8. That's a constant meters per second. The frequency, the lower one, is 530 kilohertz. So that's 530 times 10 to the 3 hertz. And if I do that, I get 566 meters. And the wavelength on the other end, do the same thing. C over F, 3 times 10 to the 8 over 1710 kilohertz and I get 175 meters. Okay, so the wavelength range is 175 
to 566 meters. Okay, similarly, you might be asked, given a frequency, so given a wavelength, and asked what the frequency is. All right, so now the next one, electric field is 50. What's the magnetic field? So B is E over C. You see that constant C is 3 times 10 to the 8 comes in for every calculation in this chapter. So it's just going to be 50 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8. So it's going to be a small number. And we get 1.66 times 10 to the minus 7. And the units for magnetic field is Tesla. Okay, so very, very simple calculations and algebra in this chapter. So what I want you to do is just do both things given the frequency, what's the wavelength, and given the wavelength, what's the frequency. So again, be careful. Usually you're going to get, because the frequencies are big and the wavelength could be big or small, you're going to have SI prefixes. Make sure you know what your standard SI prefixes are and do the conversions before you do the calculation.